Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhone Dev TV. I want to give you a quick sort of tutorial on how device management and pro provisioning profiles has changed on Xcode 5. So traditionally, we've had the organizer, which sort of organized all the information. And there used to be a tab over on the left here. And it's no longer there for the provisioning profile. So this is under devices, if you're looking at this. Now you can see what profiles are on the device. And one of the new changes is that Xcode actually auto-generates a lot of different profiles. And it looks like I've got a lot of duplicates of ad hoc and then I've got all the managed things here. So there's a lot of profiles that are now on my phone um, because Xcode's trying to be a little bit smarter and do stuff for you that used to be uh, a lot of work. However, there's still some steps that you need to do to get this to all work out. Uh, when you want to add new devices and so that's the issues that i've been running into is i got the new iphone 5s and i've got a couple of my beta testers who've upgraded and getting them a build that works has been a little bit frustrating so i'm going to close this and we're going to go over to xcode's preferences preferences is where we've moved all of the provisioning profiles so normally you'd be on the general you want to go to accounts now under accounts you'll see apple ids here you've got my account and what you're going to want to do here is go to this view details button. If you've got multiple accounts here, just select the one that you want to add the device to and sort of update and come to view details. And so what we'll see right here is a list of all your provisioning profiles. And it looks like it's artifacting a little bit on this screen. I'm not sure why. Um, but there's a lot of profiles that are being automatically managed. The only ones that are really important to me are the ad hoc and the app store when I need to submit something new. And you can see I've got some duplicates. Um, so before you used to be able to like delete stuff and I don't think you can from this interface. Someone said that you could uh, press delete key, but when I hit delete key, uh, nothing happens. And if I tried to do a command delete, nothing happens on my duplicate entry. So they said that you had to hit the refresh button to make that work. And I'm not sure if that's the case. Um, so if you need to manage and sort of double check that Xcode's grabbing the right provisioning profile for an app that you're trying to archive and then share with a beta tester, uh, you really need the iPhone uh, configuration utility. And so to show you real quick, what you want to search for is just iPhone configuration utility. And that should bring you the Mac one. Don't download the Windows one. That was the first one that popped up. And um, that's not what you want. So once you download this, you can open it up. And I've got it opened up on the side here. So I downloaded and installed it. And here I can see all my profiles. I can sort them. And I actually don't see the, the duplicate entry for the App Store. That's, that's kind of weird. So I think there's still some glitches here. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. Um, but the thing that you really need to check on is the ad hoc. So... I recently removed devices and added devices, and it says that there are, let's see, 34 other devices, including those two. So I think it's 36 devices. In Safari, you're going to want to jump over to uh, developer.apple.com. And then from here, we'll go to IS, iOS Developer Center and then select Certificates, Identities, and Profiles. Uh, if you're not logged in, log in, and then you want to click on this option. Once you're here, we're going to go over to devices. This is where you can add new devices. Uh, you can see I've got a lot of devices here. So if I wanted to add a new device, I'd give it a name and a UID. So I've already done this step, but then you would hit continue once you're there. And if we come down to uh, distribution, then you're going to want to make sure that your ad hoc is updated to include those devices. So this says there's 36 devices total. Um, but I think I have more in my account. So I just added four new ones. So we've got 36 of 40. So what I'm going to show you is in the iPhone configuration utility, this shows that I have 36 uh, because you add the two plus the 34. And now I'm going to select all and go to the bottom of the screen and hit generate. So this is one of the steps. Now this is loading, it's creating the provisioning profile and it will refresh when it finishes. Now, 
This is the part that I don't understand. You can still download this, and maybe that's to support other versions of Xcode, but now Xcode sort of auto-manages everything for you. So downloading and, and trying to use this provides like zero feedback. If I come over here and it doesn't look like it finished, or it doesn't like me, so I'm going to look at this. When I double-click on this, uh, if you have the iPhone configuration utility, it'll do something if you just have Xcode 5, it doesn't seem to do anything. So that's kind of annoying. Um, if I add this to a library, now I've got a duplicate entry. And I can see one has 38 uh, other devices. So that's that's the one I want to use because those are the four new devices that my testers have. Um, but I believe I can delete stuff here, but when I'm using Xcode, it will sort of auto-manage stuff. So I'm going to close this real quick, and we're going to go over to Xcode. And what you have to do here is, so once I've added those devices, the next step that you now need to do is hit this refresh button. So again, this is in the preferences panel and we just did the view details on the account. And it may have updated, I see two ad hocs, but I think it will delete one of those when I hit the refresh button. Look at that, one of them deleted. So I still have two app store. I'm not sure why I have two. One looks like it's expired. So it's not the ro most robust system. And it's, it's caused me a lot of frustration sometimes. Okay, so that finished. And hopefully this is the right ad hoc. Uh, the problem is if you have duplicate ad hoc installs, you'll get into a situation where you try to build the application, you try to send it to someone, and Xcode grabs the wrong one, and so it doesn't work. And then you have to repeat the process and it wastes so much time. So try and get it right. Uh, refresh, then hit done. Uh, it's kind of like voodoo magic for me because this isn't really documented. If you read the actual guide, they don't talk much about the steps that go between what we just did uh, with adding the new devices and that step of refreshing. And then they don't talk about how to configure your project. So I've got this new iPhone game and I want to send it out to some, some new people. So I'm going to open it up. And in general, let's see, we want to go to build settings and I'll hide this bar. So there's a bug with uh, Xcode 4 projects that you've updated to Xcode 5. And I don't know if this will ever get fixed or not. There's some weird settings that aren't visible that cause issues. And what you have to do is you have to actually select the the thing you can't, you can't use these automatic. So normally the automatic would work. Uh, and uh, another thing is if you see the any SDK, I would delete that. I find that to, to cause more issues um, because if you don't delete it, then these two uh, entries have to match and that's super annoying. So you can actually delete it by either clicking on it on the row and then hitting the delete key, or you can hit that little minus. And I find this much easier to work with when you do that because it's one less change that you have to sort of keep synced up. So if you're working with an older Xcode 4 project, these default settings won't work, at least in my testing. And so you actually have to go in and select your developer for the debug and then your distribution for, for the ad hoc install. And so once you do that, you should be good to go um, you can also change this in your in your project settings. Make sure you get rid of the any SDK. If it's set in your project settings, it's sort of going to default to any targets that you have and sort of propagate unless you've modified uh, one of your targets. So once you've got that, you should be good to go. I've seen other people talk about the provisioning profile, but I don't believe you need to set that up. That might just be for enterprise. I'm not exactly sure. Apple doesn't really... I, I haven't seen the documentation for this one. Okay, so now that I've got the distribution, so this is the important one. Uh, when we build an ad hoc install, an ad hoc uh, build, it needs to be the distribution so that we can actually send it to the devices that are sort of associated with that. So the distribution certificate is this one that I created right here. And when I refreshed Xcode's uh, preferences for the accounts, it pulled that down. And so we can double check that it actually pulled it down by opening up the iPhone configuration utility. And once we do that, we're going to go over to provisioning profiles. And here we can see all of the profiles. I'll sort them. 
looks like we only have one ad hoc now so it deleted the other one and we see that it has 40 devices so that's exactly what we were looking for that means sort of we're on the good track uh, if that didn't show that I had added those new devices for the testers, then you know there's an issue. You got to hit that refresh button again. Um, then I always like to, to clean everything. I have no idea if this helps with uh, creating the ad hoc product because I think it builds it from scratch every time. Um, so it probably isn't necessary, but you, you kind of have to do some voodoo magic sometimes with Xcode in my past experiences to get things to work. Um, and so then I'm going to select iPhone. I don't know why I have to select iPhone to build a archive. Uh, I, I wish it would just be smart and know that if I'm going to do an archive, I'm going to do it for the iPhone uh, rather than the simulator, but it's not smart. So you actually have to switch it to make the archive button highlightable and selectable. So now I, I'm going to archive this. And we get a couple warnings and stuff, and that's okay. And now it finished. Okay, so now one of the other things that I have running is, is test flight. Um, so if you don't have the test flight app open, you can just open it and you can sort of drag in stuff uh, from your desktop or wherever it is. If you want to drag it in, you'd have to right click on the new archive. So test build is my comment for this. You can right click and show in Finder. And then if you have uh, test flight open, like I had with that window, you can drag it in. What I find is easier if you can select the menu bar item and then select bomb, bomb game, which is the, the name of the uh, product name for the app that I'm working on. And once I do that, it will ask me for the identity. If you see any kind of issues here, uh, then you'll have to make sure and sort of tweak your project settings and then clean and try and re-archive and see if it works. Um, so it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, the issue I was having with the Xcode 4 projects is that it would not automatically select my distribution. It would select my developer or the uh, iOS sort of automatic provision. And so then I couldn't send it to my testers. So that's frustrating. All right, so once this is not showing any other errors, SDK not found is okay. I'm not using that. It's got the uh, debug symbol so that I can symbolic hate a hey, crash log. All that means is that it can turn gibberish into something that's useful when you do have a crash on a, a beta tester's iPhone. So that's a good thing. Then hit next. Here you can type something. So I'm adding new devices on the provisioning profile. It's uploading, it's complete. I'll hit next. And there's some new people that I could select and then uh, go with it. So for now, I'm just going to select myself and hit submit. And what that did is it sent it off and it sent emails to a whoever I selected. And so it sent me an email about the, the new app that I can install. So that's sort of how to send it out. All right, so that is how to create a beta test version of your iPhone app and send it to someone new on your uh, development portal sort of list. And I'm using test flight because it makes it easy to sort of see what's going on. You can see which people have opened it. They can respond to the email and give you some feedback. And it's an easy way to distribute. It's easier than just uh, saving the IPA to your desktop and emailing that out. All right, so that is it.